Good day, everyone. Isn't it amazing that it's been one whole year since we've had to pretty much close down the world because of this COVID-19 virus? It was one year ago that I stood on this very spot in this empty church trying to encourage us all to keep the faith and deal with the difficult challenges that were certainly ahead of us. In the midst of so many challenges that we've all faced, so much sacrifice and pain, we certainly are beginning to see a light at the end of the tunnel. We certainly do seem to be making progress. We just have to be patient for a few more weeks, I think. I know that nobody wants to hear this, but we've come so far. And vaccines that we thought would take years to be able to accomplish are now so many of them are in so many arms. I've had both of my shots and I encourage all of you to get the shots so that we can get this herd immunity and bring us all back together in order to celebrate the Eucharist. As we've heard from our bishop, there's no moral reason to refuse the shot and the Vatican for months has been consistent with the message that not only are all the vaccines morally acceptable, they are part of our Christian duty to pursue the common good. These vaccines will help bring our communities back together safely to celebrate Eucharist and not just watch it on a computer. But we still need to be careful and vigilant wearing masks and social distancing we don't want to have another surge that will close us down together, which would be horrible. And we are aware of these variants that uh, we don't know an awful lot about yet. So let's wear the masks, let's, let's social distance, please. Just a couple of more months, I think, that we'll, we'll have to go through the major stuff that we're going through now. Beginning with these thoughts, uh, let me share an article that I read from Franciscan theologian Richard Rohr in his daily reflections. He refers to a book by Teresa Torres, and the title of the book is What My Abluata Taught Me About Prayer and Memory. She writes of receiving her faith from her grandmother, her abuelita. It's a wonderful reflection on how faith was passed down generation to generation. Her grandmother inspires spirituality, not as a religious creedal statement or a morality code, but as a healing and a transformational way of life. Teresa, the author, is a third generation Mexican American, and she writes this, it was my grandmother who taught me so much about culture and spirituality. I keep these nuggets of wisdom, knowledge, and strength close to my heart and soul because what she taught me was that prayer is about life. There is no division between daily life and daily prayer. They are one and the same. She taught me that the great good that we call God is present all around us and we are one in the great good. This book reminds me to be grateful to all of those who have passed their faith and their wisdom on to me by the way they lived their lives and the way they dealt with the difficulties of life and the challenges of life. As I was reflecting on this article, I remembered an experience I had with my 98-year-old grandmother some 30 or 40 years ago. My brother was being married on Long Island and she was term determined at 98 to be there, but the ride down would be much too difficult. So I was the one that was uh, given the opportunity to fly down with her. And it was her first plane ride in her whole life at the age of 98. And I'll never forget that when we got up over the clouds, she turned to me and she simply said, heaven must be amazing. She had an amazing faith. Lived as a widow for 30 years. She lost one child 
She cared for another child who was Down syndrome for 36 years while she ran a business and had two other children. A great faith that she certainly passed on to all of my family. As I reflect upon her life, she lived through the first pandemic, World War I, the stock market crash, World War II, Vietnam, on and on. A woman of great strength. So perhaps this is a great time for each one of us to reflect on our ancestors who struggled through many challenges, men and women of great strength, who passed their faith on to us, who endured all kinds of hardships and they never gave up. You and I are called to this kind of strength, not just for ourselves, but for one another, and also to be models for those younger than us, to pass on to them and to witness to them that the challenges of life can be met with deep grace and faith and courage. Teresa writes, some of my fondest memories of childhood are of getting up early in the cool, damp summer mornings and finding my grandmother working in her garden and blessing the earth with her hands and her gentle spirit of reverence and awe. I found her at prayer, in silence, in the presence of love for all of us and the earth. She was at one with the spirit of good, with God. And these wonderful people, even though they have died, they're still with us. Their spirits guide us and protect us. Let us be grateful for them in our lives and, and realize also that each one of us is being called to be people of wisdom for those who come after us. May the younger generation find us at prayer and receive from us nuggets of wisdom, knowledge, and strength. Have a peaceful week, everyone, and let's all keep safe so that we can come back together and really experience the joy of worshiping in Eucharistic celebrations as a community.